What's up, everyone? Dude, let's chat where we take talk games, movies, and all things in between. And right now, we're jumping at you with our first installment of the ending of the console war. The well, just the systems war in general. The benefits of each system individually. Like we had said in a previous discussion, what we're going to be doing is breaking down the benefits and some of the cons of each individual system to better tailor what you're wanting out of your gaming experience. Um, as we've said previously as well, it's more on your preference, and that's why we're trying to do this today. It's not to promote any wars. We're just trying to say, hey, stop fighting with each other. There is something for everyone on every console, depending on what you like. I'm Juicy J, of course, coming at you live, live in this recording anyways, with Ice and Jacob. How are y'all doing this evening? I'm doing amazing. How about yourself? Can't complain. What about you, Jacob? You look tired. I'm, I know I'm good. I'm good. I'm you good. look like I'm a good. man who's been waiting for this to start for 20 minutes. <laughs> I have been waiting <laughs> 30 minutes. Or hold on, hey, let's see. I don't yeah, want to hear any excuses, there. bro. You, but, you you get to sleep in more than I do. But mm. I've been missing Breath of the Wild right now. That's fair. It's That's fair. Great, it's a good game. It's a it's really a, good it's game. It's a great game. Great. Now, like, there, there are issues with it that I still have, but. Yeah, I get you, we're man. We're not here to discuss Breath of the Wild. We're not here hey, for maybe that or the Switch this time. Yeah, I will yeah. do a late review. Everybody's on the Tears of the Kingdom hype, and I'm barely jumping just in. Breath of the jump Wild. in with a slow poke meme and just like, hey guys, this Breath of the Wild is pretty <laughs> well, dope. No, and so in his defense, he's barely playing Breath of the Wild. I'm barely playing Skyward Sword. Mm. Yeah, Skyward which, Sword is fun. Which I can say is like, it's phenomenal. That's yeah. fair. I just now started Ocarina of Time for the first time, so I still haven't finished that game. I got halfway through. I've never played it, so I never played it. So yes, I've been playing Best on play it. But anyway, but... we're not here to talk about the Switch and its awesome retro games and its its system. We'll be back to that later. Today, we're talking about the one, the only. PC. We thought about starting for with different things, but the PC is just the best way to start. Gaming itself is a luxury. Although it's become more of a mainstay and commodity within homes, and especially during the COVID area, it was more accepted, uh, definitely a bridge gap to social communication and interaction, you know. Uh, but in terms of luxuries, there's nothing more luxurious than the yacht that is PC construction, you know. Your system on the PC is supposed to be able to run any game. It's got this huge, like, multifaceted system that you learn how to build up on your own or have someone else build for you. It is definitely a treat. And we're here to talk about that system today. I'm going to let I'm gonna let Jacob kick it off as he is the newest person into the PC system. Yeah. So I, I want to know from your perspective, how um, has it been switching from console to that? I mean, PC to me has always been like a uh, out of reach mm -hmm. uh, system, or yeah, system. I guess you'll say um, consoles just for for me growing up have been more accessible, mm -hmm. so I'm used to it. Uh, and then with COVID, of course, PCs just jumped up in price. There, it was like overly priced to 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 build or even buy a PC. Um, but because, you know, my brother loves me, he uh, helped me get a gaming laptop. A high-end uh, gaming laptop. A high-end gaming laptop. Part of, a part of it was because he really just loves me, and part of it was he really wanted me to start streaming. Um, I but paid for half of it. So. He did pay for half of it. Um, it's nice. It is nice. I, I did fall in love with PC gaming. I'm not going to say... That I, you know, it was overrated or no, it's it's not overrated. It 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 is nice being able to play at high frames, graphic cards showing you know great gameplay. Um, honestly, being to go on Steam and catch Steam sales to get games cheaply, like all of that's appealing. That being said, it's still an expensive product. Mm-hmm. Um, but I enjoy it. Uh, I still miss gaming on the console from time to time. Um, 
I do miss playing on the couch. But I mean, I guess that goes into your setup. Because one thing with PCs, you can, I mean, it's just like there's many different setups. It's just it just depends on what like, you're comfortable with. No, we have we yeah. have, you know our our friend who who takes his PC everywhere pretty much. He'll hook it up to any TV he can, yeah. and at his apartment, he's also got it set up through his main TV. So yes. it, he he sits on his you know, he's got a wireless laptop and mouse oh, setup. Have, and he's, go they ahead. have a uh, the Nvidia Shield, which if I correct is basically like it makes your PC into like a console, right? Like you connect it to your TV, and it streams games from your Steam, like within the same network. I think so. I mm-hmm. think so, but. I know, like, if I want to play, like, Apex or something, like, unless I have a brand new updated TV, which I don't, it's only going to run so many frames. Yeah, I mean, uh, I know China, China, China built a budget PC that he uses for his emulators that he has connected to his TV. Like, he looks at it as his console. He turns it on, turns on the emulator, and he's just chilling on his controller. Mm Yeah. Yeah. So, so to me, like like the, the fact that there's so many diversities with PC building is very appealing. I will say it does suck that it's like it's not as expensive as it was during COVID, but it's still a lot higher end. I know when me and Isaac talked prior COVID about PC, I was talking to a, a, an old friend of mine who went to PC gaming. Um, he built his for like five hundred, and it like ran great Mm -hmm. COVID hit like everything like jumped up dramatically yeah Yeah, I mean like like, not only graphics because everybody was trying to be a streamer yes everybody everybody bought webcams I mean so so, and not and and not only that uh cryptocurrency yeah didn't help either yeah everybody was trying to mine bitcoin and, and like everything just skyrocketed and it's still higher than it was i don't think it'll ever come down because it opened up a world to many many people that kind of i mean you were kind of forced to open that door because you're just stuck at home what else were you going to do so 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 from from this of course it opens the world to different games and connected with your brother more um but the price is still pretty high which ties into it being the luxury of items here like the yacht yes. if you will is yes, the fact that if you're going to pc game it is going to be a financial investment and commitment you know yes that you have to be ready for and something else you brought up uh, interesting i didn't really consider is the fact of it's not just the main components for your desktop because everything has to run to optimal levels in order to fully experience and yeah. bring out what you're wanting from your pc and of course, if you're playing games uh, like recently, I've played like Loop Hero, Vampire Survivor, and different things like that. Obviously, you don't need this amazing 4K HD TV. I mean, right. those are fun games. You don't need that. But if you're trying to play something like God of War, if you're trying to play something like The Last of Us Part One Remake, then you're going to want something that looks good to really showcase the the aesthetic, how just well crafted the game is, you know. And for it to run smoothly, run at 60 FPS or higher, you know, I just, I see that everywhere with it. But my thing is, that's something else to consider is there's more than just the main parts of the desktop, you know, everything will kind of tie into your experiences. Now that's of course coming from Jacob who just got into it um, and uh, to the thanks of Ice for getting him into it, of course, and then being able to play, Jake being able to stream. But then we move over to Ice who has been PC gaming for some time. I would say what what two years, Jacob? Two yeah, years? It's, been, it's been longer. Than three two years, years, three years, I'm about three say, years since, since was, COVID. Was, I was, thought, right? No, you you started doing it like right, right before you started building it right before COVID. Okay. Yeah, I started the process and yeah, I, yeah. So so okay, so it was still uh, COVID era. So was that 2020? Yeah, so I got, 2020. I got, so I got about like a little over two years, I would think, a little over two years in skin in the game. Mm-hmm. And I remember staying up late, checking Newegg for GPUs, yeah. and I found a 16, uh, 16, uh, 1660 Ti, which, for you out there, if you can find one at a good price, it's still a beast of a card. Just throwing that out there. It's a beast of a card, and I got that at a good price. And, of course, I went on and got my 3080, because that was the whole point of me building it. And the reason I built this was because I couldn't get a console. Because, channel would know. 
Jacob, shout out to my friend. Jacob knows. The idea PC Gaming was great, but the price was not yeah. for us. Mm-hmm. It was never for us. And yeah. and if you want to build a PC now, it is possible to get a good PC on a good budget. Like I saw, like most of my parts I got are used outside of my GPU. Like my RAM, my motherboard, my CPU wasn't used, but everything else like was used for the most part. Um but I think all in all, I think my whole setup, I said it was about what about four or five, like like four thousand. With the uh, monitor and all like that. With, with the upgrades and stuff, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. because when you first when you first built it, it was it was still around like the two grand. But then yeah. throughout the years you have slowly added to, added it. to it. And, and yeah. that's what I like about it. So so I so no, so I remember when I when I first built it, when I first so my just my PC alone, it was about Seventeen hundred dollars, mm-hmm. and then of course now, like Jacob was saying, I, I've up, I put upgrades. And that's one thing I like about PC, is that you could do upgrades to it. Is it necessary? No, but there are times where during the PS4, Xbox One, and even the 360 and PS3, and the Switch now, the console shows its age after a while. Yeah, I would, I would like to say something though, um, on that. Uh, Isaac, like Isaac was saying, it's it's a benefit. You can upgrade, you can swap and whatnot. To me, I see that more, and, and it could just be because I'm so new to the game. To me, I see that more as a negative. Um, because even though Isaac said you don't have to upgrade, the thing I love about consoles is you buy a game, hard copy game, it's going to run on that console as long as you take care of the console. With PC... You buy a digital game, if you at one point in time you will be forced to upgrade if you want to continue gaming. Mm-hmm. And that's just more money out. Now, of course, you're gonna get better gaming experience, yes. But like for me, like the things a little about console, if I want to bring out my PlayStation 2 and play PlayStation 2 games, I can. I don't need to buy like a PS5 to do it. I disagree with that wholeheartedly because you're showing your inexperience with that. I might be. I might. Like I said, uh, I'm not, oh, I'm so, not so, here's the thing. Sorry, sorry, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Let's let's take PS4 and 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 Xbox One generation. Right? Let's take that for example. Yeah. You could get a pretty decent PC. Like let's let's say let's say it's a budget build, right? Let's say let's say it's it's not below. Let's say it's average. Okay. The, yes, you could play your games on console and take care of it. And it'll, it'll be fine, right? And you're saying, you know, later, like, you, like they're going to be great, but with every new game, you feel the PC needs an upgrade. I don't agree with that because no, PC no, no, no. gives you the option to where, like, you don't need the best GPU to play the games. If you want full fidelity and, and performance, yes. But if you're ju- if you just want 60 frames per second, the thing about PC is you could customize the settings that suits your GPU. So you're not handicapped unless for spoken, um, you're not handicapped to assert just one particular setting like you are with console. So my 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 thing is what I'm trying to get at is, and like I said, it could be my inexperience, but I'm thinking like, okay. Games, let's say, and this is taking it way back. This is showing how old and inexperienced I am. Way back. Games, if I would have been gaming when Windows XP was still a thing. That ran on XP. I can't play that no more. Because XP is now gone. You can, there's, uh, a back, there's, a back, there's a back door to it. You have to do a little work, but it's not too bad. That's what I had to do with some games. So, oh, okay. so, so, um, so c- I guess cutting in a bit, I think what Jacob's trying to say is there's a simplicity to just buy a yeah. console that's going yeah. to, to yes. allow me to play this without having to consider it. Whereas the no. PC opens your, your mind and your door op- up to the fact that yeah. I've got to consider everything. I don't have to consider specs when it comes to the Xbox yeah. series or the yeah. Xbox One. Yeah, it's, it's already set but, in stone. It's yeah. already cemented. All right, so go Let ahead. me finish my thought real quick. All yeah, right, let me yeah. finish my thought now. If I was really interrupted by Jacob, oh. who couldn't speak on his turn, I had to I, talk I, over, I, I was, to talk I was over people. I was polite about it. The, uh, the, no, you just cut in. Hey, hey, hey. We all good. We're all good. 
<laughs> this person. No. Nah. So, anyways, it is a, it is more expensive. Console is more simplistic, which is why I didn't care for comp PC at the mm-hmm. time, right? Mm-hmm. Now, one thing I've noticed recently, and this is just a minor, like a minor, minor detail, because for me, the PC in the long run pays for itself because I feel my 3080 is going to last me at least a decade, if not a little more. You know, like it's a beefy card and it has everything I need it to do. It runs everything how I want it. Now, I know every two, every two years or so there's a new generation, but, you know, it's whatever you want, right? Um, but what I like about it is, this is like this is a minor detail that I noticed on Steam is that what's one thing console players are asking for developers or not developers uh uh um uh, what's it called uh what are they called the people that sell the games um publishers the publishers the thing that they're asking for the publishers developers whatever is hey I have an Xbox Series S hey I have a PS5 digital I'm not getting a disc with my game. So why am I still paying $70? Shouldn't it be 60? Cuz I'm not getting the disc, I'm getting all digital. What I noticed with Steam when I bought Resident Evil 4, when I bought Street Fighter 6, amongst other games that I bought that were like right off like new releases, they were all $60. They're at the $60. They're still at the 59.99 price tag. Hmm. I wonder if it's also has to do with that Steam's like in a lawsuit or lost a lawsuit recently. Oh, maybe, but all I know is is that you know they the price is still there, still fifty nine ninety nine. Of course, you can buy the like editions. Yeah. Another another thing I like about PC is you like games run. Okay, no one one flaw about PC. I forgot that one flaw about PC. Is that because most games are built for console, the PC ports tend to be not very well made right out, I right say, out the that gate. Was, that was a flaw that, so, that like, once we start doing the, the list down for it, then that is a yes. flaw that's been popping up recently yeah. is the fact that because, games releasing right now are just not up to snuff on well, PC release. Yeah, no, like Resident Evil 8, Resident Evil Village, it ran fine for the most part, but when the bugs came out, there was major slowdown. Mm-hmm. And I remember adjusting my sitting trying to fix it, and there was nothing, to do, like, I couldn't do nothing about it. Um, another game was uh, uh, The Last of Us. You saw how that came out. Another game, Jedi Survivor, how that came out. You know, like a lot of these newer published games on PC are not coming out polished. Like, you would think it, it would run well on PC compared to consoles. But it hasn't been the case now. Whether that's the PC's fault or the developers, which I'm gonna go with that, it it's a negative because you know, back in the day, when a new game dropped, we bought it, we had a good time, and we were good. Like back 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 in the day, EA actually made good games. Activision made more games than call like than just Call of Duty. You know, they they were actually trying. Yeah, they had, they had Guitar but, Hero, yeah. Well, I mean, Activision made the Spider-Man games. That's fair, too. And I'm sure and many others. So, but, you know, all in all, I feel PC, I would only recommend a PC to someone that is a, either a, like a hardcore gamer and has the funds for it. I wouldn't, mm-hmm. if, if, you're, if you're struggling and you want a, a good, like, if you just want a game, then go with the console. Get the series. I mean, the Series S runs well, runs games well. If you're yeah. on a budget, or if you want to save a, a, a well, couple hundred more bucks. Well, we're not. We're not. We're not. We're not, we're not here series. to. We're not here to push where you're going. Console or not. Like I said, the point of this series here is no. just to point out the positives and the and the negatives of it. Well, so no. yours, I will. I will say no. this, and this I'll is the, more. This is. Like I was really goal. pushing a console. I was just saying because that's three hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, so if, if you're, you're on a budget, go for that. But... Like, like, yeah, yeah, go the for con is, the, in the, general. The con is PCs is is, is super expensive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially con. especially now. But if you can find, if like me, like I fortunately had a friend that had a gaming PC laying around, and I was able to get a good deal on it, then then go for it. Yeah. But I don't know if you if you want the best gaming experience for the most part. 
PC's where it's at. I will. I will agree to that. I will, and this, and this is like, I guess, my last statement on this because I feel like this is a dual, like, point. Dual it's sword. both. It's both positive and negative. When Isaac got his gaming, his PC gaming, and I went to play Apex for the first time, and he I was get there off for the chair. and I and I was there for the weekend, like. Like, I thought I sucked at Apex. Because I was just, like, I felt like I was good, and then I started sucking. I'm like, man, I just suck at this game. This is, this, I'm just doing terrible. But then when you play on something where it runs the game flawlessly, and you, it's, it's like a Pandora's box. <laughs> like, like, I played Apex on the PC, and then I got home, and I, I couldn't touch the game. And I haven't played on console since. No, I mean the term is Flowers of Algernon. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, something Woody Entertainment and Store Online Abridged. Shout out to y'all. But uh yeah, Flowers of Algernon. Once you taste that nectar, nothing yes. tastes as sweet. It, it was, is it was so hard for me to even look at the game and play the game. And I, I know it probably sounds like an elitist, but I mean I've played consoles. I I, mm. I played on the Xbox. I played on the PS, and then I and then I went to PC and I played over the weekend when I was visiting Isaac, and I came back home and I just could not. I just couldn't, man. It was it was mm-hmm. like like the experience was so great that when I came back, it just felt so bad that I just stopped. I just even I uninstalled the games for my consoles. Wow. So, like you said, it's a dual point. Like, it's really yes. good. It was amazing. But then you're going to get used to it. You're going to get spoiled a bit. You're going to be like, man, I got to play it that way or no way at all. It, yeah. It'll sap it. I get it. I get it. For the PC itself, it is, an, it is a great system, of course. And I like how you are putting it. Like, if you're wanting the best possible gaming experience, we're talking from the aesthetics to the speed to, to the ability to reach out to multiple games over multiple platforms, both legally and illegally playing them, um, that hey, is going hey, to be the hey, PC. Hey, we, don't, we don't condone that around here. We don't condone it. We don't condone it. You can buy your stuff from licensed providers, <laughs> but I am saying... It exists. You're grown ups. You're yeah, grown you're grown ups. ups. You, you know, you know the consequences look, look, of what look, you do. Look, look. Buy all your games the right way, but you know, do, look for humble do, bundles. Do what you, so do that's, what you gotta so, do. So, so I'm gonna start breaking down some of the some of the points from from this talk. So, of course, it's it's aesthetically the best thing you're gonna play on. You're gonna get your best performance out of it if you build a gaming PC. You know. So that's a positive, of course. Um, a, a massive library, multiple places to get games, uh, better deals when it comes to it because it's not usually like if you said Steam for one instance. Something is surprisingly that no one's really brought up in like humble bundles back in the day. How you used to be able to like get games for whatever you could pay. Like there are a lot of downloads for these things where you can pay for a game, pay whatever you want, and get a game. So that's another benefit. There are. Definitely cheaper options for getting games, you know, uh, while still playing them legally, you know. Well, well, I mean, Steam sales. Everyone else, Steam sales are oh, pretty gnarly. Steam, yeah, Steam sales are 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 the, yeah, they have killed many a bank account. I, I and I am a poor soul of that. I myself have a gaming laptop myself and my wife share, and I like to jump on that from time to time, though I don't play on it near as much as I do my Xbox. But it's still a really great system. Uh, the, the biggest thing here is that ICE has a desktop, and we have laptops. And so yes. something to note is that although... Hey, hey, we, hey why are you coming out like that? Well, no. Although laptops do have some form of customiz- customization, they are limited and especially limited faster in terms of what you can put into the stuff. So moving on to some of the, like well, the last part of the, the pros for it is you don't have to upgrade your system every four or five years. You just have to upgrade certain parts of it, which in itself might be a little less expensive or a little more expensive, depending on what parts you have to get, but you can better maintain smaller components of it instead of having just to send the whole system in. 
Although you can do the same thing for consoles, it's a lot more convoluted. There's not as many people doing that, and most of the time you want to send it into the professional so you don't void a warranty. Whereas a PC, you have full range customization, you know, uh, especially, and, and of course, you've got many people in the stratosphere of the internet who will either, you'll watch a YouTube video about it, you'll probably have friends who are ready and willing to tell you what you're doing wrong, you know, like, like you know, to help you <laughs> fix it out. But then some of the negatives, of course, the price, that would be the biggest negative, you know. It can, nowadays, it can cost between 2000 and 4000 and even then you're not even at the top-end computer. Yeah. Top-end computers ranging from 5 to 7 you know, maybe even higher, but from what I'm seeing, like, you want a top-end computer that could run, like, since we brought up Forspoken, Forspoken on its top settings was 5500 when it first released. I was like, dang. You have to have a $5,500 right. laptop, or not laptop, duh, a PC, in order to run it at the settings it was meant to run at, you know? Not taking shots at the first book. That, that was the publisher's fault. That's not, that's not sure yeah. what that. No, no, I mean, I'm just, but I'm just saying, like, you know, but like, there, but that just tells me there is a gaming laptop, or gaming laptop, gaming PC out there that is literally designed to to handle that stress, you know? And you'd have to pay that, but even still, 2000 to 4000 ain't nothing to shake a stick at. Like I said, brought up a Series S you can get right now for pretty cheap. But even if you're going for the X or the PS5, you know, it's still pretty manageable and about a fourth of the cost of, of actually building your own PC. And that's the other thing. Here, here. Go ahead. I'll say, here we go, here we go. That way people don't think I'm just trying to uh, uh, a white knight Xbox. You can also get a PS5 bundled with the new God of War or Horizon mm. for 500 that's what I'm saying. For a fourth the cost, you can get uh, a system that runs everything that's releasing right now in the new game setting, and it and you know it's a fourth the price. You know, so price plays a big point to it. Um, definitely, there's not usually warranty stuff unless you paid an additional fee for someone to build it for you, you know, or got or got a pre-made thing from a from a publisher, or developer, or whatever. I say publisher, uh, a manufacturer. And so when something goes out and it, it's on your financial responsibility is to fix it, and most people ain't going to fix it for you. So uh, that, you know, sometimes comes into play with consoles. It doesn't always, but sometimes it's better than none times, right? So that's another another issue to it. Um, other than that, for the, for the PCs, you do have access to a lot of games, but especially recently, Games that have been releasing for some reason or another aren't running the best on PC, on drop, on develop. Yeah, you know, that that is on the developers. We don't really know what's going on with that. That's not a usual thing, but since it's happening more in 2023, it is something to bring up right now. There's a little bit of a, a of an air of caution right now to a lot of games dropping, you know. And so these things do play into to factor. And of course, the dual point that Jacob brought up that I do want to point out, I guess, as a as a, a, a farewell to it, is that playing on a gaming PC is going to be an amazing experience if if you are wanting to game and get serious and stuff, you know? And even if not, it's going to be pretty amazing if you have all the parts to it, you know? Including, like, the modder and stuff like that. But from a negative sense to it, too, it's probably going to be hard to go back to anything else, you know? Which I do want to add one thing. What's up, buddy? I just want to do. I do want to add one thing. Going back to the negative of PC ports not coming out really well. Mm-hmm. There's something Steam offers without you having to twist their arm compared to the Sony's, the Xboxes, the Nintendo's. Mm-hmm. You have two hours of game time. If you play the game for less than two hours and do not enjoy it, you can return it for a full refund. But that refund is credit to your account, isn't it? No. No, nope, so. it goes straight back to your thing. Usually I'm they don't go so, for yeah. that. I can respect that. I can respect that. Um, something else to bring up about uh, PC then on the negative end of things is that with PCs and with PC gaming, you're going to you're going to experience a lot more technicalities, which I feel could also be a, a dual point. If you're someone who wants to have a lot of of 
control and and really looking into what your computer can run and what specs it should be and optimizing your experience and stuff, then the PC is the way to go. But on the other hand, it's something that was brought up earlier as well is the fact of unlike uh, other the consoles, would be the other three in this series, you know, unlike the consoles, you actually do have to pay attention to the system requirements of every game coming out, you know? Yeah. And you'll have to do yeah. that for, for every game, but especially every every other year, you should be checking that to see if you need to drop your settings uh, to get it to play, to get it to function and stuff. And for PC gaming, since it is something you're trying to aesthetically just, like, stay into, it's why we call it a commitment. Because if you're just getting it like we would, let's be fair, to just play the game, to play the game we want. We don't really care too much about aesthetics so long as it's running, you know? But generally, when it comes to PC gaming, one of the biggest things you're trying to do is run it at the best settings, aesthetically beautiful, like all this other stuff, which yeah, is where it starts getting more. Especially if you're going to put the money towards it, man. Exactly. If you put the money towards it. Like, I don't see the point of putting money towards a PC to not get the full experience. At that point, just, mm -hmm. just get a console. So to get the full experience from gaming PCs, you are going to be spending a decent chunk of change every two to three years, uh, which equates to about a console's worth of, of, of yeah. stuff every two to three years. So something to keep in mind as well. It is a financial commitment, but as Ice and Jacob said, it's probably going to be, for the gamer, one of the best experiences if you've got the right setup, you know? Y'all agree with all that? Any final I final agree. words yeah. as we're leaving I, with it? I agree because there's I agree because uh, there's one thing I I I, I was always uh I, I never cared about FPS when I was a kid. I remember Jacob Jacob uh played Modern Warfare, yeah, and I played Modern Warfare too. And Jacob, one thing Jacob always told me was like. Why was like he was like why aren't the rest of Call of Duty games 30 FPS? Modern Warfare One was 60 FPS, but all the other Call of Duties outside of that were 30 FPS. And I'm just like, I can't tell the difference. It runs, it looks good to me. And then it was honestly like I know for some people like really you can't tell like no like honestly once I got the PC and I cranked I got <laughs> I cranked the SOB to like 120. FPS just to see and no, no 144 on Apex. I had a 144 on Apex. And when people say it looks smooth like butter, it looks smooth like butter. Like the motions are so fluid, and you can tell to where when you go back to 30 FPS, you think your 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 games are lagging. Hmm. There you go. And yeah, Jacob, did you sure. have anything? You, you agree? No, you agree? no, no. I agree. I agree with that. Yeah, guys. That I mean, that's that's how it is. Like, play PC if if you want a taste of it. Go flowers of Algen on yourself. But <laughs> yeah. uh, this was installment one, of course. Thank y'all so much for listening. Um, we're going to go on to part two next. Part two, we're going to just jump straight into the Xbox community. Uh, so look forward to that coming later on. Um, yeah, it's a fun little series. We got real a little quick. long on it, but there was a lot, a lot of things to say. I, you have something to say, real quick. One, one more thing. I, I, I don't know when does it come. Is this coming out this week? Oh yeah, oh yeah, this week. Before the Thursday, first, the first full week of June. Yes. Okay. So on Wednesday, actually. So up, it'll, if, it'll be on okay, the Saturday. Okay. So tomorrow at one p.m., come check us out. Make sure you ring the notification bell and subscribe. That way you know when we go live to give our live reactions to uh, Summer Game Fest. There we go. There 1 we go. 1 p.m. Central Time. 1 p.m. Central Time. Look forward to it. Guys, if you're listening to us, then obviously it's just listening. You're probably on the pod, your po favorite podcasting platform. And, of course, you found us to do Let's Chat. Uh, but we are Dude Let's Chat on your favorite podcasting platforms. You can also find us on our socials on Instagram, TikTok. Twitter, and of course YouTube at Dude Let's Chat. If you're watching us on YouTube, please hit that bell. Subscribe first, of course. I mean, I guess you can do both. And, uh, you know, leave us a comment or two. Tell us what you think. Do you think we touched all the, the topics? Obviously, we're probably missing a few of the intricacies of this, as we are all just poor gamers. But, um, yeah, if you got something to say with it, put it down in the comments below for us. 
look forward to the next installments of this. Look forward to more live streams of our gaming. Look forward to more talks. We appreciate all of you, and we'll see you next time.